what's the good word, y'all? DKB here. So we've seen in light of this 4-2 season, two games above 500, firmly in the playoff hunt early in the season, games coming up that look like they should be favored in, in our direction um, with the Broncos coming up next. And uh, we've been getting flowers and receipts galore. I mean, we've had guys that have shut us down and said we have no chance early in the season. Um, uh, Rex Ryan, uh, Stephen A. Smith, uh, Quinn, Brady Quinn for a while, and nobody's heard of him since. Um, and, you know, we were written off and nobody realistically should have expected us to have this kind of record this early. Uh, and even Robert Sala rebuilding this program from the ground up. Jeff Obrick has even gotten, uh, you know, a, a much bigger fan base supporting him again after arguably getting, you know, comfortably saying that he probably should have ended up uh, on the hot seat and that if our season did go down the drain, he was going to be the scapegoat uh, that kind of saved Robert Sala and the rest of the coaching staff and hopefully bought another year or two. Um, and a lot of people made a lot of noise about him not even being the primary candidate choice, et cetera, et cetera. But a guy that's been flying under the radar that arguably has had the best unit out of all three phases for us uh, for the better part of this last decade and uh, really has kind of kept us relevant to a certain degree has been Brant Boyer, our special teams coordinator. And, you know, for me, early 90s, baby, it, it's... It's lovely to see again because I'm not too far off from being in that Mike Westhoff era of uh, seeing consistent, excellent special teams play and the kind of players that they were bringing in. And, you know, Mike Westhoff has talked about a lot of things uh, recently between his book coming out. I've seen him on various podcasts uh, and connected with members of the Jets community to kind of speak on his experiences and things. And, you know, Mike Westhoff... In a lot of circles, you can say he's really the Bill Belichick of special teams when it comes to coaching. The man knew the ins and outs. He knew how to develop players from the ground up. He knew how to get all of that grit and grind that you need to play special teams and to a certain degree crazy out of his players. And we've we seen that on the field, uh, not only from a production standpoint, but the demeanor for the guys that we brought in and how they relish their roles. Generally, you consider special teams players kind of those fringe guys on the roster, they're really kind of glue guys that kind of keep a lot of things together. So, you know, starting off with Mike Westhoff, you know, we see him with the Jets from 2001 to 2012. Uh, and then he's really been coaching or coordinating since 1982, which is crazy. But again, the Bill Belichick of special teams, we've only seen a very few handful of seasons where you can say, OK, things might be falling off the rails and he's been able to come back and do a tremendous job again after maybe a little bit of buy in um, from upstairs to kind of help bring in some players that he needs. And with Brant Boyer, it's been even a step back from that prior to the Robert Sala staff. There has not been a heavy emphasis on Brant Boyer having guys that you can say are going to be perennial all pros or can go out there and say they're top 10 in their units, etc. So thinking about Brant Boyer's kind of career arc, you know, he gets hired with Todd Bowles as part of his staff. He survives Todd Bowles. Adam Gase keeps him on. He survives Adam Gase. And now with Robert Sala, you get the feeling that there's no intention unless he can go and get a higher position somewhere. Uh, that he'll ever end up leaving if this coaching staff is successful. And, I would love that having uh, having, you know, consistency in the special teams unit, I think, is a huge part of things. If we didn't have Mike Westhoff and he decided I want to be a position coach now or something like that, I can only imagine what our special teams values would have looked like. So with Brent Boyer, you know, currently we're looking at the number two ranked special teams Uh in the NFL 2021, it was the same thing. We were showing that we were ranked number two. Um, and then it kind of depends. It's been a little hard pinpointing the stats here. But Brant Boyer, I mean, coming up, one of the huge things I loved about the staff, and I think that might have been what kind of endeared Robert Sala to him as well, is that he was a former player coach. You know, he got drafted by the Cardinals, and that just happens to be where that Mike Westhoff overlap uh, kind of came from. So it's almost kind of a patch, you know, a passing of the torch. His disciple, 
his disciple here just happens to be one of the best at his position in the NFL um, in terms of coaching these units. And when you take a look at the players that he's done, and we'll kind of run through some of the names here and what's happened, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, he's finished four of his seven years so far in the top five uh, when it comes to special teams rankings. So some of the highlights for him, I would say as a whole, Lock, uh, Lachlan Edwards, he was a guy that we thought, uh, you know, the Aussie punter, we thought he could be a revelation for us in terms of, you know, punting 60-yard balls across the field, pinning guys inside the 20 all the time. It never quite materialized into all of that, but uh, at least dating back to a couple years ago, he was ranked fifth in net punt yards, and he was ranked fourth in punts inside the 20, which is a huge development considering, again, Lachlan Edwards was a guy that was pretty green to football. Uh, we also seen Brant Boyer dramatically increase um, the the statistics that some of these kickers and punters and special teams returners um, in the kick and punt return game have compared to their career averages. I mean, again, the huge kudos that I have for him is this has been prior to this season, essentially one of the best units that the uh, New York Jets have been able to field. It's been defense, it's been the run game, and then it's been special teams. Um, and not in any particular order. Sometimes it's literally our special teams that have won the games for us uh, in between return or punt, re kick or punt return touchdowns, um, or as we've seen recently, a couple blocked punts, blocked kicks, etc. So it's been a phenomenal job. Here's some of the rankings, and uh, there was two main websites I kind of looked at, but the rankings were very different. DVOA is a, a, a term that they use to kind of judge what the value is over the expected average that a team has across the NFL, trying to keep things as consistent as possible across all teams. So when I went with that in uh, Football Outsiders, here's essentially where Brant Boyer's teams have ranked since he's came in in 2016. 2016, we were number 32. We had Jalen Marshall as one of our main returners, Nick Folk, Locke Edwards. 2017, we were 25th. We had JoJo Natson. We had Jeremy Curley. We had Chandler Cantanzaro, Locke Edwards. 2018, we were ranked first in the league. We had Andre Roberts, who happened to be the all-pro returner. We had Jason Myers, who a lot of people were upset that we had let go. And we had Locke Edwards. 2019, we fall back a little bit, but we're fourth. We have Braxton Berrios, who we bring over. We have Sam Ficken, Kari Vedvik at kicker, Locke Edwards again. 2020, we take a huge step back. We rank 29th. Braxton Berrios is still there, but we run through a bunch of kickers. Sam Ficken, Sergio Castillo, Chase McLaughlin. Braden Mann comes in as the new rookie in town. And then we see a huge increase once again. 2021, we jump up to number two. Brax and Berrios, we still have a bunch of kickers that come in, Matt Amendola, Eddie Pinheiro, Alex Kessman, and then we even have a few concerns with Brady Mann where we ended up bringing on Thomas Morstead, which again, a lot of people were sad to see let go, and we've seen some of the struggles uh, within those first two, three weeks with Brady Mann where people were, again, upset that we let Morstead go, uh, but in 2022, at least now, maybe after this full week is finished, they have us at number three. Uh, Braxton Berrios, Greg Zerline, Braden Mann, and we've seen all of these players come out better, at least during that tenure that we've had them with the Jets, than they were, at least for career averages prior to that. So it has been a phenomenal job. I think Brant Boyer, I would hope, continues to stay with the Jets for the long term. I really do think he's the next rendition of Mike Westhoff for us. And uh, we are seeing it quite a bit. I mean, one of the most underrated moves that I love that's been getting a lot more talked about recently is Michael Clemens. Uh, he was asked a couple weeks back in his press conference, why would he have a guy like Clemens, who's, uh, you know, generally uh, a solid rotational player on the defensive line. As a rookie, he's going to obviously be improving and things, but why would you sacrifice that piece for special teams? And he told him, all right, the guy's a menace. Uh, <laughs> He's a goon on the defensive line and special teams where you're going to have, you know, lighter guys that are out there because you want speed elements and things like that. You're not going to want to block him. So, you know, the presence that he has and then the ability, of course, that'll follow up with that will kind of give him an advantage. And we've seen that be true already. Um, 
So I absolutely love it. I think the guy's creative. We see some of the angles that some of these guys can take and how they've been taken off on special teams. And I, I only expect that trend to continue. So flowers to Brent Boyer. Uh, I'd be curious what your guys' thoughts are about how he's done so far. And uh, I would give the guy a lifetime contract if I could, to be honest. I think he definitely, uh, as we've seen so far, supersedes coaching staffs. If you give him the players, which Robert Sala has been a great um He's been a great advocate of making sure he does that. We've seen Justin Hardy as a prime example. Uh, he he's gonna he's gonna definitely supersede whatever is happening there. So let me know your thoughts, um, and I will catch you guys again. Peace.